first, let's visit the real world. My meeting has just ended, and I want to get a cab. My final goal, is to get quickly back to the office. Is this guy alone? Or is this a realistic and typical need, worth solving with the help of IT? Let's build the simplest possible UI proto and simulate the scenario with the user. Alright, we have data to prove that we might have a case. Let's build it. Here is our software team. They could start working so that one of them decides that he plans what we do. You then do the coding, you do the testing, and so on. That's practically a factory assembly line, which is as fast, as its weakest link. Another option would be a self-organizing team. It takes time to learn to work together, and self-organize the work. Nobody can just say what we do. We start building a common understanding of the world around the problem domain. We visualize the work on a Kanban board. This also helps make the bottlenecks visible, before they cause a jam in the process. We start building one epic, at a time, with the whole team. We split the epic to tasks together. We utilize everybody's knowledge and viewpoints to minimize, yes minimize what we need to do. We finish this epic together. We have a common goal of getting things ready. Or getting them flowing, as some may say. We are all responsible for getting things ready, not starting. My interest is not to save my own little piece on the assembly line. Instead, I want to help my teammates in their challenges, so that we get things ready. This also results in efficient knowledge transfer and learning in the team. With multiple heads and eyes on the same problem, we end up doing just enough quality, not micro-optimizing or releasing unfinished tasks. We have common things to discuss on coffee breaks. We don't optimize our utilization. We optimize our lead time. We don't rush to start new things, but instead we consider whether we could do things simpler. There is a learning period for self-organizing the ways we communicate and work. After that, our productivity has virtually no limits. By releasing in short production cycles, we learn more from the complex world, out there. We have a feedback loop, to collect actual data. We throw test balls to understand the relationship between cause and effect. If there even is a relationship there. This all results in maximizing the minimum, building as little IT as possible to solve the actual need. We learn about the complex system as we go. Our responsibility as IT professionals is to help solving real-world needs, with as little IT, as possible. What about the actual, coding? It's still needed. Even when we code as little as possible. When you want to be a coder in this chaotic world, where disruptive technologies and platforms emerge every week, you do best in training your learning skills, not individual techs. Coding, is very much a craftsmanship profession. You learn by doing. Practice new languages, do your own small projects, code with others, and follow GitHub projects. A good coder reasons with facts and data, not opinions and own preferences. A good coder builds enough quality, not too much. His focus is making value for the client. Code reviews, git pull requests, pair and mod programming are effective ways of learning from others, and building just enough quality with the judgment of more than one person. And bear in mind that some coders are better in technology, some are better in understanding humans and clients. Everybody doesn't have to excel in everything. Finally, and most importantly, do your work, at a sustainable pace. For all you know, you are doing this, till your retirement. Hopefully, even after that.